Hello and welcome to Linux Server Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from SoundTraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based provider of learning resources for the IT community. This time we're going to show you how to simplify Linux package installation using yum groups. This is based on Chapter 6 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Linux Server Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide. The book is not required, but if you'd like to get a copy to follow along, it's available on Amazon and through other resellers in both Kindle and paperback edition. The software version we're working with is CentOS version 6.5. This should apply to pretty much any recent version of CentOS or Red Hat. Uh, older versions may require uh, a, an additional software package or two, but fundamentally this should work on, on any recent version of either CentOS, Red Hat, or for that matter, Fedora. Now, why use YUM groups? Well, um, to simplify installation of related packages. So, for example, if you want to install a web server, you not only install the web server, but all of the different uh, add-ons, the different plugins that uh, add additional functionality. So one command installs many related packages, and you don't have to do them all manually. Prerequisites for this exercise, you'll need administrator root access to a Linux server and internet access in order to connect to the YUM repositories. Equipment software requirements. Well, I'm doing this on a computer running in a VMware workstation virtual machine uh, running CentOS version 6.5. You can do this either on a virtual machine or a physical machine using either Red Hat or CentOS or Fedora or, or any uh, YUM-based uh, distro as well. Here's a summary of the steps that we're going to do. We'll use yum group list to view available package groups. Then we'll use a grep filter to look for specific groups. Then I'm going to use the yum group install command to install a group of packages. And then I'll remove that group using the command yum group remove. Here's the disclaimer. As usual, this video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Do not attempt these procedures on a production server without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. These procedures will alter your computer's existing configuration, and performing these procedures may open your computer to the public internet and subject your network to attack. So make sure you have current backups and take precautions, including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. Always good advice. So let's do the demo. And we're going to start by using the command yum group list just to see all of the groups that are available. And it's a pretty extensive list, as you'll see as the uh, display unfolds. And there you see various language support. And uh, we'll scroll up so you can see some of the other um, packages that are available. Actually, we'll scroll up using the scroll bar. There you can see the available groups and the installed groups. And this is kind of interesting because here, notice that it's showing a, a list of, what is that, about 10 or 11 installed groups. Now, we're going to install the web server. And notice right above the heading available groups, uh, there's no indication of web server there. So we'll put that in in a moment. In fact, if we go down and look under available groups, you'll be able to see that it's there. Notice right here is web server, along with a couple of other related uh, groups as well. So let's go ahead and uh, do a uh, the same command, but we'll put a grep filter on it just, again, so you can see the, um, the web server. So I use the up arrow to repeat the last command, and now I'm going to pipe the output of that command into a grep filter, and we'll just look for web. And of course, it is case sensitive, so we have to use an uppercase W. And it whirs for a moment. And there you can see all of the packages that include the text string WEB with an uppercase W. And that includes our web server. So let's go ahead and install it. So we'll use the command yum group install. I have to put it in quotes since it's two words. And I'm going to come down with my mouse and grab that. And then I'll right click and that paste it in at the cursor. Close the quotes and hit enter. And it'll whir for a moment. In a moment, it's going to ask me if I want to do this. There's the confirmation. I'll say yes. I could have put in a minus Y option and it would have bypassed this. And here it's doing the installation. Seven different, seven different packages um, total. Downloaded them. Now doing the installation, actually. And we're done. And now if I do the command yum group list. And again, it's going to give us a pretty lengthy list. Let's use the scroll bar to go back up. And there you can see under installed groups is web server. So it's now installed. And if we want to remove it, uh, use uh, the, the similar command. We'll touch the up arrow twice. And we're going to change group install to group remove. And this time I'll put in a minus Y option so it doesn't prompt us for confirmation. Hit Enter. And again, it whirs for a moment and removes everything. And now it's all nice and clean. 
Now, there is a downside, of course, to using uh, Yum Groups, and that is that it installs a lot of packages, some of which you may not want. And uh, that's, that's something that you'll have to deal with. And in my own experience, what I've found is that when I'm first learning to work with a particular technology, I may use automated services like Yum Groups just to give me an idea of all of the different options. But then as I get more familiar with the options and and more familiar with the operating system and what I want to do, I tend to do things manually. But if you're just getting started, this is a great way to just see the options that, that the uh, Red Hat CentOS folks think are important to include in a web server. And then later on, you know, you can do your research and decide whether you want to include them or not. If you'd like to check out other resources, we've got plenty of them online for you at www.soundtraining.net. Also, I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. I'm on Facebook at soundtraining.net slash Facebook and Twitter as well as Google+. If you'd like more videos, we've got them on our video channel at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like to get the companion book, I'd love for you to have a copy of it. It is a recently updated as of June 2014 with a lot of new exercises and it's considerably expanded. Uh, It's available through our bookstore at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore or through Amazon or the usual online resellers in both Kindle and paperback editions. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope it's been helpful. I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time.